Hello, and welcome to this, the fourth video exploring Thomas Barrett. This video will look at his genealogical and heraldic interests. In particular, these two linked sciences uh, proved quite fundamental, really, to his exploration of both Lancashire's history and also the families within the um, area. Heraldry and genealogy are seen as quite niche subjects today. Um, there are numerous books published on the subject, for example, these fun little um, introductions to heraldry, heraldry which provide a brief overview to the art and or science. But they remain crucial to antiquaries exploration of the past, in particular families and how families have um, uh, changed over the years in terms of marriages, deaths, and their involvement in historical events. As I've already mentioned with regard to this manuscript on screen now, Thomas Barrett was really interested in the visual language of heraldry. Um, indeed, his first traced manuscript, now in the Bodleian Library in Oxford, um, is exclusively concerned with the forms, practices, and history of heraldry going far back um, into what predates what we consider what we consider to be um, the standard narrative of heraldry today. On the coat, on the cover of this manuscript, you can see the coat of arms of England um, with the quartered arms of um, France with three fleurs de lis and England, the three lines in the first and fourth quarters, with the second quarter being the Scottish line rampant within a treasure, which is that border, and then um, the third quarter is of Ireland, namely the harp. This coat of arms was used by James I and VI, then Charles II, and also Queen Anne. The use of this historic form of heraldry is clearly intended by Barrett to offer the volume a sense of historical age. Turning to the interior of the volume, you can see on the image on screen now that this manuscript holds 548 coats of arms. As I'm sure you can appreciate, this indicates Barrett was a compulsive collector of heraldic information. Namely, to understand heraldry, to be able to decode the language, it was necessary to be able to identify which heraldic devices, which ordinaries, which uses of tinctures, be they metals or colours, um, referred to which people. And indeed, the right to bear arms was hereditary. Therefore, uh, it was necessary to understand who within a family had a right to use the coat of arms at a particular time, and in the marriage of one armigerous person with another, in other words, people who have the right to bear arms, uh, resulted in impaled or quartered arms increasing the complexity, um, and therefore being a was able to identify specific people. Barrett collected this information as a way of understanding and being able to trace the history and the visual representation of the history of families within Lancashire. And recording 548 within this one manuscript volume attests to this. The content of this manuscript, however, is not simply a record of families' coats of arms. As you can see from this page, um, from the front of the volume, um, Barrett begins by exploring um, various heraldic tinctures. For example, he is referring to um, yellow, the heraldic language, which is referred to as ore for gold. He also continues further by exploring um, heraldic ordinaries, which are shapes. Here you can see on this page uh, different forms of crosses with a variety of end termini to the arms. He then also engages in what we would more generally understand to be the standard heraldic practice, which is recording 
the forms uh, and colours of uh, people's coats of arms. Um, what you can see here also is um, interestingly actually uh, the use of letters um, on the top left hand image you've got S A O B uh, which refer to the different colors O referring to ore, uh, gold, A, argent which is silver, S, sable which is black and so on. Uh, notably all of these families um, as you can see from the inscriptions are of Lancashire or Manchester families. For example, the bottom left hand um, shield belongs to Dr. Mannering of Manchester. Further on in this volume is a far more ornate uh, rendition of Sir Thomas Egerton of Heaton's coat of arms with its supporters, the dragon on the left, lion on the right, the motto um, on the banderol beneath, um, the helm, the helmet, the mantling, which is this organic scroll-like um, detail above the top of the coat of arms in white and red, and then finally the crest, which is these three um, tied arrows all pointing downwards. Note the crest refers purely to this device on top of the helm, and it does not, as generally um, thought of, uh, refer to the actual shield and its heraldic ornament. Relating genealogy to heraldry uh, is seen really very well in this here. There is a whole entry on his family history dating back to Edward III's time from the Middle Ages with the coat of arms on the left hand side. So here you can see how heraldic and genealogical research um, are combined um, and how it is of use to the antiquary um, who is interested particularly in the family history aspect of the science. We can also see this here um, in what is effectively a family tree augmented by the introduction of coats of arms. Here you can see how the quarters, the impaled half coats of arms, change um, depending upon the bearer um, with marriages uh, between families um, who are armigerous. You can see the consistent, uh, consistent use of the um, black lion uh, with the black crescent above its head uh, is consistent, but um, the right hand um, shield, half of the shield, uh, is what varies uh, upon marriage. And further illustrating this, um, and the, uh, really a demonstration of Antiquary's knowledge of uh, family histories and the visual language of heraldry is revealed here. Um, it is a pedigree, uh, which Barris records was copied in 1790 with the original um, being in the possession of Mr. Kingston of Salford. Uh, what he does is um, decode the various coats of arms within the quarters of this shield um, and who they belong to, which families they are. So this visual device reflects a family's history. In a really interesting manuscript with the frontispiece on screen now, which I'm going to address in the next video on heraldic imagination, um, this is a manuscript of arms recorded by Thomas Barrett from 1783, and it describes and records another way in which antiquaries really engaged with and amassed the knowledge necessary to decode um, heraldry and also um, genealogical um, history. On this page which I'm showing you now, uh, folio 53, it records various um, arms belonging to members of the Barrett family. You can see um, once again the use of lettering in these uncolored shields, A, G, S, or, um, to refer to argent, red, jewels, white or silver, um, or 
gold, S, sable, black. So it allows Barra to very quickly record uh, the physical form of the shields without actually having to paint them, which is um, uh, quite an effective um, time-saving technique. And this is referred to as tricking um, and is a standard practice. And this volume itself, given a collection, given the very large collection of coats of arms, um, is referred to as a roll of arms because it is simply a record of a large number of shields. These are arranged uh, not according to formal um, categories of heraldic devices such as ordinaries, uh, which are particular heraldic shapes such as horizontals, verticals, diagonals, um, lions and different heraldic beasts in different forms, not just a lion rampant, which we are used to seeing, for example, um, on the um, uh, British uh, the Royal Coat of Arms, but instead it's arranged as and when Barrett acquired information in his surveying of historical documents and also um, uh, reading um, historical uh, material on coats of arms. You can see here, located within this roll of arms, um, Barrett records the family history of one John Barrett, Barrett of Tiverton um, and how uh, the family tree um, developed. So you can see there's a close relationship here between genealogical research and also uh, the different uh, coats of arms which um, uh, families bore. And indeed, in this painted shield, next to the painting shield, um, he, um, in this bold titled arms, um, gives the very specific, very short and brief um, description of the arms using a technical language of heraldry, uh, referred to as blazon. And it is, he writes, or gold, on a chevron, which is this red, um, pointed uh, banner in the middle, uh, jewels, referring to red, three lions, passant gardens, referring to their position, argent, which refers to their colour, silver, between three mullets, sable, between three five-pointed stars in black. So you can see this language is very specific, a language that Barrett has mastered and uses um, to demonstrate his knowledge and also um, through this simply communicate people's coats of arms without having to draw them. Also interesting within this manuscript is the fact that you can see here uh, Barrett has quite literally prepared page after page after page of blank shields ready to be filled in and annotated with um, the specifics of families uh, ready for tricking, um, to be able to record en masse this information. So antiquaries really um, mastered their art and uh, accumulated information uh, en masse, and this is uh, one of the techniques which Barrett used. And I, looking at this, think that he used um, some form of stencil to very quickly draw out these shields in preparation uh, for... Um, their completion. But as you can see, Barrett never actually got around to filling these in. And concluding this volume, there is an index. You can see I've focused on the Barrett entries uh, located on pages 52, 53, 54, um, and so on. Uh, this really shows the antiquarian compulsion to collect information, categorize, and understand. You can see how this antiquarian interest in heraldry and genealogy comes together in this fantastic volume um, by Barrett, which is entitled Lancashire Pedigrees Collected from Rolls, Ancient Manuscripts, etc. Um, authorities recorded by Thomas Barrett from 1782. And in the bottom tableau, you can see Thomas Barrett um, with a notebook in hand drawing the family tomb and features coats of arms of the people interred therein. 
this volume is magnificent um, given its scale is far larger than any other volume um, in the Barrett collection and you can see how on this genealogical table Barrett is depicting coats of arms in connection with uh, marriages and uh, family trees and this uh, fantastic um, uh, family tree uh, with a very wide range of different coats of arms um, inserted of the Dawn to Sea family. Uh, and note the top. I think this has given you a good insight into Barrett's interest in heraldry and family history and how, uh, upon his death, the notice uh, was given and uh, stating that he was well known to the families within Lancashire and within England as a whole, and also with the heralds in the College of Arms. In the 18th century, heraldry um, was of real interest to antiquaries, 